So, Mine, um, you kind of initiated this uh, this this session. So, mm -hmm. um, well, what is it that precisely you want to? What, what are the, the the matters you want to address today regarding um, media, health, and democracy? Because that, these are the enormous things we we, try, we decided to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, as you know, uh, Germinal, I'm a voluntary member of uh, the M25 Cologne uh, branch. And uh, when we were discussing with the colleagues and friends uh, about uh, these videos, um, I was told that uh, we, we should contribute with our expertise. Yes, these are informal debates, but it is nice if we can contribute with uh, some expertise and knowledge. So since I am uh, from media studies area, media studies, journalism in general, I thought I could uh, contribute uh, to the debate uh, of coronavirus uh, with uh, media dimension, media and journalism. Um, so this is not really uh, based on an academic research, I must say, and it doesn't represent uh, the view of uh, the university I work, but these are just uh, personal insights and remarks that I want to share and open to discussion also, uh, because there are hopefully, we cannot see now, but there are hopefully uh, people uh, contributing and, and hopefully they are going to be active uh, participants as well. Um, so yes, these are personal insights, but uh, by relying on the legacy of critical political economy and cultural studies, in general, critical uh, media studies. Um, the uh, initial uh, idea uh, for me was uh, actually um, to um, to warn us, to uh, to realize us, to open the debate, to widen the debate. Because when you when we uh, talk about journalism, coronavirus, or the news and coronavirus, what we see mostly is. Um, the discussions and news about fake news and post-truth policies. That is important, of course, uh, that, uh, yes, news about coronavirus should be correct and it should be confirmed before sharing and everyone should be careful. But what uh, bothered me, disturbed me, uh, was the fact that uh, the debate was covered, uh, covered mostly uh, by relying on um, each individual uh, journalists or each uh, social media users irresponsible behaviors, you know, that sharing uh, information without checking. Uh, this, uh, this was something I was thinking for a long time, actually, that, uh, you know, um, in many countries there are fact checkers um, uh, in, in the area we live in, in post-truth era, fact checkers. Uh, so there are organizations in many countries uh, and in a way, it, it, their existence is important. I'm not saying they are uh, unimportant, unnecessary, but we um, end up feeling as if, uh, okay, we have the fact checkers and let them <laughs> check facts and we don't have any other problem. Uh, but in fact, there are many, many problems and it seems that we are going to have more problems uh, soon in, in all, all over the world. Um, my uh, point, uh, in uh, summary is really um, to uh, broaden the debate, not to limiting uh, with each individual um, journalist in uh, unethical behaviors or, uh, you know, each uh, individual social media users. We have really much, much more serious problems. We already have them, but with the coronavirus, it became more visible and it became really vital, more vital now. Uh, I mean, Political economy is important, and it was discussed in uh, these videos uh, previously also by the leading uh, 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 researcher uh, and theorist, Noam Chomsky, uh, to start. Um, commercialization, you know, these platforms uh, occupying our life. Uh, yes, they give us opportunity, of course, to, to interact now at the moment, but there are the cases that they work with side by side with the government, oppressive governments, they share our uh, information, data, and so on. And we are these days talking uh, more about uh, 
the surveillance, uh, of course. And uh, what also bothers me is that um, uh, who is limiting the information? I mean, what, what are the main sources of this information? Uh, misinformation. When we look at the world now, yes, uh, we see uh, many, many uh, oppressive governments, right-wing populist leaders. Uh, remember, uh, many of them said, oh, okay, we didn't know uh, the coronavirus would be that serious, and we didn't know that would be uh, very difficult to prevent. You know, this was their declarations. So it was not really uh, an individual fault of uh, irresponsible social media users or, or uh, journalists, but it was their own declarations. So what is boring, I guess, uh, for me uh, is um, they use these discourses now to, to legitimize uh, more oppression, more limiting uh, limitations on press freedom and freedom of expression in general. And uh, I urge uh, all of us to be very, very careful on that. Um, if you imagine, I mean, access uh, is important and when, how can we access information uh, through scientific knowledge? Yeah? To, they will share the data, they will share the statistics and we will know. And at the moment, most of the uh, governments, they don't have good uh, alliance with uh, international associations, international health associations, or even national health associations, professional organizations, experts, because there are conflicts, there are pol uh, polarizations in many uh, countries. So they don't include them, they don't include their expertise. So what we see is really uh, that old uh, debates and polarizations continue in a, in a very, very dangerous way. So what uh, is happening is uh, living in den denial because they can live uh, in denial with the media they created. Um, and, and at the same time busy uh, with trying to silence the others, the other uh, existing civic associations, alternative media and so on. Very powerful uh, sources they have, uh, trolls and bots, if you see uh, in Twitter, in other uh, social media spheres, so there are uh, very uh, different ways of attacking and limiting um, freedom of speech. Uh, and we should, uh, another major point I want to make is that we should be very careful of not narrowing even with journalists and media freedom. Because I tend to consider the debate, uh, frame the debate as a, a broader knowledge production, information and knowledge production. If, you, if we put it in this way, and we will see that um, not only journalists and uh, academics, uh, civic rights defenders, uh, many others are uh, at the process of criminalizing and being uh, targeted uh, by uh, this right-wing populist uh, governments. So uh, we see a more uh, holistic uh, approach, I guess, uh, in that sense. Uh, for example, um, um, you know, producing the news and uh, knowledge, uh, creating knowledge and sharing beyond the nation states, and even doing a comparative work. Uh, what are the similarities? What are the differences? Yes, there is neoliberal capitalism almost everywhere, but there are also differences depending on the regime, depend depending on the structure of uh, capital and uh, government. Uh, and uh, depending on the existence of racial legal, legal authority, to what extent uh, we can talk about law being equal to everyone and so on. There are many, many uh, other parameters. Uh, so we see in Russia, China, India, Brazil, Iran, Turkey, uh, even in uh, Turkmenistan, even in Hungary, which is in the EU, that uh, Bas uh, making a, uh, you know, conducting basic, jo basic journalism is becoming more and more impossible because you have to, I mean, in, in some cases, even uh, to use the word Corona is almost prohibited. How many people died is almost prohibited and um, whether health professionals need mask or not, whether it is absent. So um, asking these questions to uh, politicians or policymakers, 
or uh, or doctors you know who, who are the sources actors uh, all of them uh, are becoming uh, more and more uh, difficult i think uh, i mean making good journalism is becoming difficult uh, and it can end up uh, with losing your job uh, that you can find yourself in a prison uh, easily uh, and so on uh, so really um, we have to uh, think about these debates and imagine for example access is um, accessing information accessing new sources is one of the basic parameters of liberal journalism but it is uh, becoming uh, a luxury that you, you cannot find easily. You cannot find it operates easily and comfortably. And you have to struggle to uh, use this right. Uh, I mean, that is important uh, for citizens, also for journalists. I mean, I have the right to know. And, and the journalists uh, are very important because they are uh, working uh, for me to uh, use this right. You know to access uh, uh, information uh, yeah i took some notes because i don't want to uh, uh, repeat myself but uh, it's even i mean if you uh, think about the basic parameters of uh, journalism you know what happened why happened who uh, so even replying all these uh, questions need um, a free environment democratic environment uh, properly Mine, Mine, if, if if i could ask you a question there's one element that i find very very interesting mm -hmm. in what you just said is that specifically in in what we call uh, authoritarian governments uh, or, or you know countries you would you, you you are stating that the crisis has made uh yeah the, the job of informing people way more complex than it was before um it's 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 as though the crisis had revealed what was there in in you know in situations that are semi this semi that where the the um mm -hmm. there's, there's pressure but the pressure is not exactly a, a legal direct pressure but it's more like a insidious pressure well so what you're stating is that things are now worse precisely because of what is at stake and precisely because um, of, of, of the, 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 uh, the exact aspect of the crisis. So it, it's, it's like, yeah, there are numbers of people infected, numbers of people dying, uh, um, measures that are taken or not taken. These, these elements, well, reporting about these elements is now more difficult, more dangerous, uh, to say it bluntly. It's now more dangerous for journalists and or the, or the um, activists in the media, it's, it's more dangerous for them. That's, that is definitely what you mean. Yes, yes, I think so. And imagine that uh, there is, um, uh, especially uh, that we should have a distance. Now we are talking uh, from distance. Uh, we have to keep some distance. And imagine for journalists uh, living in really chaotic, uh, you know, uh, places they need to have that distance and implement their job and there are uh, imprisoned journalists now in many countries especially the, those i listed uh, previously and uh, well they they cannot have distance you know they they will get virus they will be infected uh, most possibly there is a high uh, possibility so uh, there are those people who uh, are in prison at the moment and who should be delivered and there are campaigns actually for that uh, because they, they were they really didn't commit a crime they they are just there to uh, express uh, some views which are not seen uh, legitimate or uh, banned uh, they should be released uh, as, as a basic uh, human right uh, you know necessity and what I'm saying is the others are also uh, can be more hesitant uh, to uh, proceed to be more assertive uh, in doing their criticism, because now uh, the problem is not only um, you know being uh, prosecuted legally, but when there are uh, some uh, structured legal uh, authority and uh, process and system, sometimes there are not. Um, but even uh, losing your freedom and losing your life because
because you can use, lose your life. So you, what you get is uh, almost like capital punishment. You know, uh, is a, is is an outcome of writing a report. You can find yourself in prison. So this is something I, I want to open uh, to debate. And when uh, when we see now, I checked uh, yesterday uh, World uh, Health Association's web page. And many uh, countries don't have the data in there. And imagine many countries, they don't, uh, we don't know whether they trace the data statistics or not, because they don't share properly. They don't share with the public properly. So we cannot know. And that is very important. That's a life and matter, uh, you know, uh, life or death uh, matter for us. I mean, sharing information, making it transparent always are important but now with this um, uh, um pressure um, that they apply uh, it causes our lives it causes also journalists lives as well uh, and uh, some countries they uh, organize campaigns and asking uh, in twitter hashtag uh, you can uh, see uh, more transparency please from the government so we are asking uh, more transparency to to be alive and uh, even though many uh, uh, scientific experts declare that it is very important you know to have this data it should be very open and accessible so because we will uh, look at the uh, process you know how how uh, uh, the pandemic is uh, going how, how it is uh, repeated what kind of uh, you know um, uh, problems they have in which cities uh, what is the case we have to know uh, with all the details so that we can uh, try to prevent well uh, so my um, worry is that because of uh, all this uh, uh, we will uh, see more more and more authoritarianism well in in this situation there's something i've observed which is quite interesting is that I, I have noticed that in, in, in the French speaking world and also in, in, other, in other parts of the world, some journalists have uh, started to use some new forms of media, um, for example, telegram channels, etc., to spread news anonymously because their own media uh, or, or, or organization just didn't want to, 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 to spread the news. So, uh, the, well, there are several of them. Uh, some of them are, you know, when you start, when you discover them, you don't, you don't, well, you don't immediately trust them. So you just wait for some news that they actually spread to be confirmed. And then you, you fact check yourself and you get to, you get to say to yourself, okay, this wire, this thread seems to be interesting. And then you start following the people. And uh, there are, in, in, in the French speaking world, there are obviously some journalists and also some people that work for health organization, some possibly people working for the WHO itself, that actually, yes, uh, release things hours or sometimes days before they are confirmed by the organizations. And um, you have, well, it's possible to have access to, to, these, to these elements. But the, the, the well, the, the real, issue I see here is that um, you as a, as a, as a receiver, as a, as a spectator of all that, as a reader, you have to fact check what you are reading. You have to do, you have to make an effort. Uh, and possibly it's, it's, it's problematic because you can't believe immediately the news you get. But on the other hand, at the same time, you have to be a bit more Acute, a bit more intelligent in 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 the way you you uh, you you deal with the news. You have to you have to listen to several things to see if they are if if the first thing you, you you've heard is credible or not. And um, I think that this crisis has just put us in a new world. So it's now more dangerous for some people to do their own job in some countries uh, that you've named um, Russia, etc. A lot of them uh, and. What I would like to, to, to add is that um, this process of checking the news everywhere, well, I mean, it, it's actually happening everywhere, even in nations, you know, within nations where, um, well, you always thought that the press was free. You discover that there's a very strange uh, atmosphere of self-restraint of, of uh, oh, the, the government has not, um, has not 
uh, clarified this for the moment. Let's not talk about this. It's happening a lot in France. So uh, it's, it's um, and there's also, yes, a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of independent journalism going on. And it's, well, the, the situation we have to face as, as, uh, as, as, yeah, as readers is that we have, we definitely have to check different sources all the time, which is possibly not a bad thing, don't you think? Yes, of course, it's not a bad thing, um, but uh, you have to have uh, good critical media literacy skills that you can uh, compare and see, you know, what is available and you can appreciate and decide which um, which is correct, which is more intensive, which is based on uh, facts and which is based on some uh, wishes. And uh, also, um, we shouldn't forget that uh, uh, there are many problems that, you know, people, some people uh, don't even have computers, some people don't have uh, internet connection, uh, and some don't know many other languages you know sometimes uh, you reach uh, good uh, news and good documentary in other languages than uh, you know so uh, and these are of course uh, not new issues you know these are all debates digital inequality you know the issue of digital inequality um, we are not equal uh, in that sense either and also, uh, we shouldn't forget that um, people uh, work, you know, even under these conditions, people, uh, many people have to uh, go to work. So we don't have a luxury. I mean, uh, it's just um, what we need is, I think, better uh, from uh, my perspective is really a more long form of journalism in uh, also, we, we should see this in the mainstream media as well, you know, not only uh, in alternative media. Yes, I can reach alternative media myself, but because of the um, conditions they have to operate, because of the low uh, sources uh, they work, sometimes you don't uh, find detailed reports, you know, you end up uh, seeing, yes, they have the critical uh, position, which is good, which is needed, but you want to see more fact, more investigative journalism, and sometimes uh, it is absent too. So, uh, in that sense, uh, I am not uh, really optimistic. I'm uh, uh, upset of uh, lo losing, uh, you know, uh, this mainstream media as well. You know, uh, every day, uh, whatever they call as the legacy media in the past, and. And the media systems uh, are becoming very polarized uh, as an extension of political systems. We see uh, many, many polarized uh, uh, media systems. So uh, it's like voting, you know, it's like the election process. 50% believes in something and the other believes in another thing, completely different. And, and it shouldn't be the case most of the time. This uh, event happened or not, you know, it's very simple sometimes, but even with this very, very simple fact, you see how distorted it is. But of course, I'm talking um, as a kind of uh, a Turkish, uh, you know, academic uh, citizen, and uh, from that background and thinking of the South Europe also, and uh, thinking of the populist leaders, uh, it's not the same everywhere. I'm not uh, saying that uh, every, everywhere, but there is a shift. There is a, a you know tendency to to become everywhere. Maybe it's going to be like that if we are not careful. At the moment, North Europe, for example, Scandinavian countries, but their uh, newspapers are still very good. You know, high quality, uh, not tabloid. You can see many um, informative uh, uh, reporting detailed reporting and in some countries uh, there are still public service broadcasting uh, in, in an ideal way but in most of the cases you, you don't see it you see how public service broadcasting is transformed into state broadcasting unfortunately well there's, there's a lot of that but uh, i would like to give you the uh, the example of what i saw recently in france uh we have a a, a national public system of of, uh, of television and um, the worst, um, I don't know, the worst critique I've heard recently about how the, govern, the French government 
dealt with the crisis and the reasons why this or that didn't happen, the reasons why this or that decision wasn't um, made at the right moment. The worst critic was in a magazine that is broadcasted on, on you know, on, on public television um, at 8 p.m. Um, on, on, on in, in, in France. So um, what I would say is that quite strangely, I witnessed in France and in other countries, in other languages, a lot of self-restraint, a lot of medias, a lot of mainstream medias that really started to sound like they were, they, I don't know, like they were the mouth, the mouthpiece of, of their, their own government, just like in, in as though, as, I don't know, as though it were, I don't know, yeah, North Korea or something like that. But at the same time, you can also have these moments, these pure moments of um, critique. I'm not saying that what I saw in that program was entirely right i don't know but all i know is that it was very very uh critical of of of, of the government that funds the the channel that was playing the program so that was broadcasting it so definitely some things are still possible um in in in, in some situations yes as you said um the good old uh, traditional things like, I don't know, like the New York Times. I mean, I discovered about the, the coronavirus crisis on, on January 27th. I mean, I read something about the, um, the outbreak. Uh, it was about the social media in China that were absolutely not um, showing the same thing that the government was showing. And that's when I started myself doubting about Chinese facts and Chinese uh, numbers, etc. So, yeah, there are a lot of different things happening. But I think it's 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 the uh, well, it's it's the characteristic of a crisis. I mean, some things go worse uh, in in in, uh, in journalism, in state journalism, or or totally not independent journalism. Even though the the, the, the even though the media is private, I mean, it sounds like it's purely government. Um, and some of the things are going in 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 the right direction. And also, just like we are doing it right now. A lot of people, when they face situation like face situations like that, they go like Jello Biafra, you know, the the, the musician of um, the Dead Kennedys, that said, "Don't hate the media, become the media." Yes, mm -hmm. a lot of people are are, are started are starting to 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 uh, create their own media. Sometimes to talk about things that have absolutely nothing to do with the crisis because they've had too much of that, and also a lot of people are talking about the crisis itself, and and. Um, I think what, what what possibly DM25 and what we are doing right here in, in, in this media is to try to get people to think about um, how to find their own way to either, I don't know, get the information they really want to have or produce the information they want to hear about their own place. Uh, somewhere in Europe, somewhere in Africa, somewhere in Asia. Um, it's that's I think that's the way way people should try to 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 interact because when you start interacting with the media you uh with the content of the media when you produce your own content when you critique the content of other media you start um yeah you start double checking things you you, you question things you questions you question the logic of of, of the way things are said etc and i think that's 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 what we need to do um and and uh yeah, but and, and there's there's this thing that you've just said, which is in a sort of a way, it's not terrible, but it, it, it it's it's um I don't know, it frightens me. It's the fact that yes, some good old newspapers in some places like New York, uh, Sweden, etc., are still credible. Um, I mean, it's it's not nice for us, the left, to have to have to say things like that. We should try <laughs> to work on creating, um, you know, like massive structures of 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 good old uh information that is credible i think yes, yes. Uh, i mean uh, of course i mean i'm not uh, totally uh, pessimistic but uh, now uh, i think two days ago i was uh, looking at the ipa uh, ipi website international press institute uh, and when you see uh, since uh, coronavirus uh, uh, when you see that they are tracking media freedom, uh, that is very important. Tracking and uh, keeping uh, the records, keeping the uh, data. Um, I mean, from the place we look, maybe uh, we just think that, okay, not many things are happening. But when you uh, look at the reports from different countries, you see that 
many are under arrest, many are threatened, many are put in prison. So even uh, in Europe, and it was shocking that uh, some uh, scores were uh, even for Europe was too high. Um, of course, I mean, uh, mainstream media is not uh, something we uh, rely on, but um, doing alternative media also is very, very uh, difficult. And um, some of them have to uh, work with the uh, logic of uh, uh, commercialization as well, you know, that uh, you have to click and they, they, you, you end up seeing very sensational uh, headlines from uh, many alternative channels sometimes because they want to be clickable, they want to get the highest records. So um, I think uh, we should be uh, skeptical uh, towards uh, this uh, logic of uh, market and commercialization. And what uh, what is necessary? I think uh, this crisis maybe um, creates the uh, conditions of urgency to map really to map what's happening uh, in the world. Uh, DM twenty five, for example, created the. Um, work on technology and there should be something also on freedom of information and journalism. What is happening in, in the world at the moment, you know, how is uh, information uh, is being uh, constrained? What are the obstacles? Uh, so we should see, uh, create uh, the map. And also uh, in terms of production, I want to see more and more uh, uh, news reports uh, organized, uh, produced by um, uh, journalists from different countries. You know, as, uh, this this is like the equivalence of what we are doing now. Yeah, I mean, speaking uh, from different countries. You know, not limiting ourselves with the nation state. It is funny uh, we are limiting ourselves with the houses now, with our homes. But anyway, our mind at least is not limiting us. Uh, with the nation state we are born or we live in. Uh, and I want to see the equivalence of it in the journalism also, you know, pan-European uh, or even more international reporting uh, so that we can see what's happening, you know, we, that, uh, uh, that is very, very important, I think. Well, regarding the... the uh internationalism uh, within this, this, this crisis in terms of information, I think that one of the problems we're going to face is, um, well, the absence of income for a lot of journalists in, 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 the, in, the, in the next, I don't know, weeks or, 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 or months. And um, I think, well, I don't know, it's some sort of a fantasy, but if the European Union could fund uh in in you know independent journalism uh in you know through through um uh i don't know a way that would be uh reasonably um i don't know independent itself like if there were yeah if there were ways for for, for the european union to fund people who actually do a good job uh, as independent journalists or 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 or, or yeah, that's that i think that would be that would be a, 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 an idea to, to try to decide well to maintain um freedom of, of of expression to maintain critical spirit to maintain the uh, the capacity of of the press and the independent press uh to 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 uh, inquire and and find out what is happening uh and 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 report about what people say even if they say stupid things um I think that yes, I mean, it would be it would be important to think about how the European Union could uh, support that, uh, and not not to not not to support people that say that the that the that the EU is great or doing a great job, but just 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 to to support critical voices that uh, actually um, help in 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 improving things, especially in, in terms of information. It really makes sense to 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 uh, to fund. Uh, critical associations, critical medias, um, and and keep them independent from uh, from from mainstream media that are themselves more and more dependent um, uh, and and funded uh, or owned by uh, oligarchs, mediacrats, etc. Et and another, another and also another thing I, I wanted to add is that um, we also have to think about how the uh, the um, well sick people and their families could also try to 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 gather information 
gather uh, elements and 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 uh, ask for 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 transparency my memory of the aids crisis in the uh, in the 90s is that uh, groups of, of of activists and i was a member of one the the very very first thing they wanted was they wanted the truth about the numbers they wanted the truth about the medications and things like that and they used that uh, foucault sentence knowledge is power and i think that it's we are we are facing the same sort of thing here is that um millions of people now hundreds of thousands of people now are families of people that are in in icu etc and they don't know much about the things they're not told much about what's happening and uh i think that this this is one of the uh, one of the elements like people uh you know the real people taking over on 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 what it what it is to be sick in that situation what it is to be uh, helped taken care of not taken care of um you know there's there's all this thing about you know special drugs that anti-malaria drugs that could have worked or that could work or whatever um i think that i mean if there were more voices about people saying okay i took that drug or i didn't take it i went well i went wrong etc um broadcasted by by by, by people that are, or by media that are independent from um the local health organizations or government i think that would that would be a great thing we need more expression or of of citizens facing the crisis um that's what that yeah that's that's why i i love this don't hate the media become the media mm -hmm. i mean i totally agree uh, that uh, because currently uh, what we see is really people becoming uh, numbers you know that they are either dead or uh, had the infection uh, had the infection again and recovered but th these are real people they, they have the stories and we want to know who, who these people are and how the process is being experienced you know by themselves with their words uh, with their witnessing um, uh, that is important. I mean, I uh, uh, came across, uh, like you said, yes, you can become the media. Um, one uh, prisoner um, found uh, a, a cell phone and he recorded uh, what's happening in prison at the moment in Corona time in US. Uh, and it is uh, uh, shared by witness, uh, the organization actually uh, already working to empower people uh, by using the uh, technological devices, video, and so on. Um, so, and they circulated now. They circulated. I mean, if uh, people, of course, should uh, uh, circulate what's happening to them. But uh, firstly, there should be a um, free environment, then they shouldn't, uh, neither journalists nor citizens should self-censor themselves. If there is a free environment, they can uh, do it. But if there is not, there, there are so many worries and fears, it uh, affects them negatively. But funding, I mean, accessing, I think uh, accessing and the democratic conditions uh, that uh, I keep repeating, but they are very, very important. But secondly, we discussed and uh, what you brought funding is important of course but that uh, they can uh, create conditions for the people who have good ideas and who can uh, produce something else something new and alternative um, but it should be open uh, to the usage of many different people though not the same uh, international associations um, Voices, voices are important. I mean, we uh, hear, um, we keep hearing the uh, voices of leaders and their declarations and so on. And sometimes um, they are covered, uh, the reports are covered in a way that uh, what they do uh, is a reaction, the solution to the crisis is almost like a, a favor they make to the public. In fact, it's not the favor, it's uh, it's our right to ask and it is their responsibility to provide it. Uh, that is also funny that I know many, many uh, news uh, being done. Um, 
I mean, there are really uh, so many uh, cases. I mean, even when we say public, for example, uh, or citizens, we are not talking about a homogeneous uh, entity, homogeneous structure. Um, geographically, from north to south, it differs. Uh, there's a big differentiation. Uh, now, uh, I remember images uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, people uh, are um, on the road and still uh, trying to be protected uh, from virus. And in the same, uh, you know, uh, in Europe, in the same city, uh, those with green parts, the, the cities with green parts and the others are different. I mean, if you uh, yes, keep distance and you can uh, go to park or forest, uh, you know, for, for a while, we are told, yeah? But in some cases, in some geographies, it is just impossible because there is uh, almost no green area left being left. So that is the duty of uh, journalists and, uh, of course, us that we can make the news and that's what we are doing, actually. It's almost uh, a media itself. Um, but for, uh, I mean, how many people are though um, reaching these channels? Uh, because we should, uh, our aim uh, should be to increase the, uh, that many people uh, may, uh, should uh, access this information, you know, this alternative information or seeing the uh, cases from different perspectives, you know, how, how uh, possible to ask uh, keep distance in a refugee camp or in, in prison, in military service. Um, I mean, we, we sometimes uh, assume that uh, we have uh, everything now, internet connection, computer, but children, for example, some children are not in school, but they have to uh, keep uh, with internet, but some, some just don't have internet, you know, it's just as simple as that, uh, or don't have a opportunity. Uh, to do it. Uh, so we, I think we need to look at the um, different layers of inequality and deprivation. It is a good thing in a way. Class, for example, uh, has been uh, mentioned uh, every day um, in, in the media and social media uh, these days. People um, remembered, you know, people remembered the importance of it and uh, they understood, they remembered somehow that oh, there is such a thing as class, you know, there are those who have and who have not. Working people have a different story, precarious labor has a different story, and uh, unemployed uh, homeless, uh, of course, have different coronavirus experience. Gender, and gender uh, is, is also very interesting, and uh, I should be touching upon that as a woman, it, it is seen as a number, uh, you know, even uh, in organizations like the M25, yes, yeah, women are important and we should have more numbers, uh, but we are not only numbers, you know, we are uh, human beings, women, and, you know, we are more than numbers. What is the importance of having more uh, women in, a, in an organization? It can be an alternative political structure like the M25 or in a media organization, Yes, they will bring their own perspective. They will bring their own life. Otherwise, you wouldn't notice. Those who have privilege, they don't notice what's happening. We don't notice we have clean water from the tap. We, yes, I take it for granted. I do drink from the tap here, but this is a privilege for some others. So it's gender is like that. I mean, we can talk about, um, uh, being women journalists differently from men, for example, when men are being um, attacked, you know, verbally, uh, no one tells them, you know, I mean, oh, I will, I will rape you or something like this, all the swearing words that I don't want to use here. But if uh, a rivalry or bullying or harassment from Twitter through social media, they target their uh, femininity. You know, that's the strategy it is being used. Uh, in coronavirus time also, um, I mean, most of the uh, people uh, in uh, health sector, care industry, care uh, sector, they are women. Most of the numbers are women. 
cleaning home, you know, there we are at home. Yes, make your uh, world uh, in home, and it it is easy to say, but many um, housework is on the shoulder of women at the moment, taking care of uh, you know elderly children and so on. Uh, inequal uh, distribution of uh, domestic uh, work also, you know, housework. And uh, feminist organizations uh, warn uh, these days also that uh, there is a big uh, increase in domestic violence because people are stuck in the same house. They have to, uh, you know, share the same uh, limited physical space. And, so, uh, yeah, I mean, when we talk about public or citizens, we should see uh, that we, we are all different from each other. We are not talking about one, uh, you know, we are not in the same boat as many uh, others argue. Uh, there are a lot of different parts of the boat. The boat is made of a, a lot of different, uh, yeah, there are people working near the engine and others having a, a cigar on the deck yeah it's definitely not it's definitely not that simple and yes gender uh class uh these di these differences show a lot um i i i totally agree with you um and in terms of um yeah well there's this there's this thing which is like the, it's the very basic thing it's like uh some cops in france uh gave tickets to uh, homeless people because they were not respect res respecting the confinement at first when i when i read when i read that i thought it was some sort of uh, you know like mock journalism like some sort of the onion or the equivalent the equivalent of that in france but no it was not it was real uh and uh yes and it was reported and it it's it, um the thing is that the article did not give much uh, space to the voices of these homeless people. It was just reporting the fact, which is in itself a scandal. It's a logical, it's it's comical anyway. But the, the the thing is that yes, there was not much about the voices. I've seen some homeless people now on on on, on the telly in 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 France uh, and uh, yeah, in, in other countries. But there's not much of that. Uh, and yes, domestic violence, the fact that, uh, yes, if you, if you just simply take nurses and until assistants, they're all women. Yes, th there is something special uh, about this. And yes, the uh, independent, the independent media and even our media should talk a lot more about experiences of real people. And I, I, I think we should we should. Uh, but this thing is going to carry on for weeks, months. So we yes. should we should try and find um, ways to 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 you know like get the people to discover what it is to be a, a, a worker in 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 in, uh, in in these times. It's not that they don't know, but definitely as the M25, we should insist a lot on 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 that, like uh, getting real people to express about real situations within this crisis. Yes, uh, I mean, this intersectionality as a term is, is very, very important and how um, uh, different uh, identities and uh, different uh, statedness, uh, those conditions we live ourselves uh, can uh, affect us differently. Uh, honestly, I mean, in, uh, in terms of racial profiling, for example, I wasn't uh, surprised myself, unfortunately, that uh, some... Uh, you know, in some tabloid uh, newspapers uh, or in streets that uh, uh, some people were uh, targeted as uh, being Asian and bringing coronavirus and so on, um, unfortunately. But uh, what is surprising to me, I mean, uh, almost new, was uh, this age, age discrimination. I mean... Uh, both in everyday life, in in a coronavirus uh, case, is a medical thing, and in, in the representation also. Um, currently, um, my parents, uh, over sixty five years old, are uh, stuck in in the house. Actually, this this weekend, uh, all people in Turkey are locked down. Uh, they, it's almost like a curfew here in in Turkey. Uh, but uh, for elderly, it has been going on for a long time. Uh, people who are older than 65, they cannot leave the house. And then they brought also uh, those who are under 20. Um, but it creates um, 
it creates, a, I think it's a very, very unjust uh, condition that uh, what are we doing now? You know, in, in health uh, system, doctors are uh, left to decide, you know, who is going to die and who is going to live. And some, uh, <laughs> some uh, countries are even trying to regulate it. If there is not, not intensive units left, who is going to use it? And not certainly old people and who, how can we decide about it? How can they decide over a person's life? I mean, is, is this less valuable because uh, they are not going to work to active workforce anymore? And maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, I'm 65 and I'm going to produce uh, a very important thing for the humanity, you know, who knows? How can uh, this happen? This is, uh, honestly, I mean, uh, it it was very very striking to me, and um, I, I'm I'm feeling so sorry also, also for all these elderly people who are in uh, houses, and again, depending on the conditions, sometimes they don't have balcony or garden, they don't have fresh air, and that is uh, something uh, which is not covered enough, I think, uh, which is not reported enough uh, in the in the news media, I believe, and that's a reality. And the animals also are not uh, reported uh, sufficiently. What's happening to animals? Some people are abandoning their uh, pets because of the sterile, you know, this uh, meat that uh, it is spreading disease. And some are uh, because the restaurants and um, uh, cafes are closed. And in some countries like Turkey, uh, there are street uh, dogs and cats, and they are hungry on the streets. Yeah. Someone should <laughs> yeah, uh, voice, uh, give voice to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yes. I mean, animal condition in 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 a, in in a, on a lot of well, in a lot of yeah, regarding a lot of matters. I mean, animal condition has never been much considered um, in 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 yeah in, in history and also in the history of journalism so yes it's quite it's quite complex to uh, to interview uh, stray dogs but when you have hundreds of stray dogs because of a crisis you have to you have to talk about it and you have to try to explain what it means where it's going and where it's coming from and um, and yes i mean you're very right regarding the uh, the elderly but it's it's not just it's not just the elderly i've noticed that in the recent uh, weeks um, and that's, i think that's that's the case in in, in a lot of uh, a lot of countries even nurses sometimes even doctors are how to say so formatted the questions that, that they are asked by uh, by journalists are so formatted that they almost automatically get the exact same answer so yes the elderly uh, the the, uh, the 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 nurses a lot of actors a lot of very important actors people that really are in it in you know at the, at the, uh, on the front line they are not being heard properly because because they're, 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 what they say, their words are totally formatted by the questions and the editing of, uh, of, of a lot of reports, especially on the telly. So yes, independent media, uh, local, what I could almost say intimate media, like things that are very personal, um, this should be, um, this should be, I don't know, considered as interesting material by a lot of, uh, 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 well, a lot of, journalists, possibly those working for the mainstream media more, but I think they also could possibly be uh, influenced if they were to notice that there are more and more uh, independent uh, local media, local and, and international slash local media like ours, that give people um, time and, and space to, to express themselves as, yeah, as people who have recovered I mean that's that's very simple. I don't think for the moment I've ever heard any word coming out of the mouth of an old person that has recovered. I'm exaggerating. There are some, but it's 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 very it's more. Well, start with you don't hear the victims. You don't really hear them. I'm not talking about the dead. I'm talking about the people that are in intensive care units or that are that have been out of them, etc. You don't really hear them. I guess that they are very 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 tired, possibly, but. Um, it would be important that we, you know, it would be important if we could hear more the, 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 the people that actually suffer a lot. Uh, and, and um, you know, that well, in France, for example, uh, we have a lot of, of uh, anonymous 
um, not a lot, but some anonymous uh, reports by uh, nurses. And it's, it's, it's quite easy these days to be anonymous because you have a mask on your face. So um, it's, but we have more and more of these, um, you know, because they have to explain that. Even though the things are possibly getting slightly better in France right now or in, in, in other countries, um, the situation is still quite awful. I mean, it's getting better, but the wave, the tidal wave, that struck was enormous and it is still enormous and uh i mean they 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 can't take they can't take it anymore um so yes i mean we should as a political movement slash media uh we should advocate for there to be more access to 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 the real access free access to to uh, to to what is heard uh, for people that actually are the 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 real the, the yeah the real ones the real pawns in this in this game which is like uh yeah it's it's i think it would be the right moment to reshuffle um you know the legitimacy of 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 words on on uh, on in in the public space just just uh, a very simple thing in in france in, in in the last five, six months, we had a strike about retirement schemes because the government wanted to destroy special retirement schemes for people like, uh, you know, the people, the train workers, um, um, the nurses and other people who had a special, uh, a special scheme for their retirement. And now we're discovering because of this crisis, why the hell they had a special retirement scheme in the first place? It's because their jobs are critical in, in, in situations. And uh, this is not this has not been said enough, but uh, the best would be if they could say it, if, if independent and then the uh, mainstream media would take this more into account because they would just hear more of them and listen and 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 then uh, report more about um, what is really happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, reaching and. Uh... Uh, sharing their own voices are, are certainly very, very important. And uh, so far, I, uh, I mean, uh, I heard, I witnessed that many people, uh, like you said, who are recovered, they share uh, from the social media their own uh, individual uh, experiences. It, it is very common. It's. Um, and when you say public space, also, uh, it reminded me uh, very good things are happening. So in a way, uh, there are many good things happening and people are showing uh, solidarity and signs of solidarity, at least, you know, in, in, in uh, some uh, cases. And um, it, it doesn't uh, come out uh, as stories or as Corona diaries or uh, news and reports, but it comes uh, in different ways. Uh, like uh, people uh, sharing, uh, you know, their videos uh, from uh, singers, artists, you know, uh, some uh, performance, uh, dance uh, uh, actions, and some people uh, they draw a, a painting of a rainbow, uh, you know, to show uh, to keep solidarity with the neighbors in front of their house, and they share the pictures uh, of that rainbows. I think it uh, it creates a very uh, nice uh, you know environment uh, socially that yes we are distant from each other physically but not socially and we are uh, here for each other uh, so there are this kind of cases and from balconies uh, that uh, uh, for example here uh, every night at nine uh, we go out to balcony and people uh, club uh, medical professionals and uh, market workers cleaning uh, uh, cleaners cleaning workers and uh, it is good it's a nice gesture you know to appreciate labor uh, so hopefully um, we understood uh, the importance of labor and working people uh, real people in real life and now uh, uh, balconies have become also, and the windows have become the uh, medium of uh, places of critical voices as well. Some people just uh, raise issues against neoliberalism, you know, against um, the, uh, the prices of rent, uh, 
and you know many many things and uh, two days ago it was full of uh, anti-war uh, banners and uh, i myself don't uh, go out much but uh, very limited but i could see this again it is circulated through uh, alternative media so in a way it is very important and it is very vital because we are not mobile very much these days and we can uh, know only uh, through uh, mediation of uh, this uh, alternative journalism in wow. a way, it is very vital what they do Mine, what you've just said sounds so much like a very good conclusion for what we've just said. <laughs> so you are afraid of uh, me going back to more uh, negative remarks? And, uh... <laughs> uh, no, I think, no, I think we were quite positive and negative, critical, and in, we tried to be intelligent on this one. But mm -hmm. um, I think that clockwise we've reached an hour of uh, broadcast. Okay. And uh, I think um, we could, well, considering well, you know the, the 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 political significance of what you've just said. I think we could we could stop there. <laughs> Don't you think? Well, uh, for me, it is okay uh, unless uh, we are accused of not being uh, very inclusive because. Uh, don't we have any questions from the audience or from the participants? Thing is that, thing is that I cannot I see it actually. I can't see any in the, the I way. I cannot see either. So, uh, so it doesn't mean we uh, ignored well, or neglected them. We cannot see technically. Any but if, 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 if some of the viewers are DM, um, mm -hmm. DM members, they can, well, we, 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 could, we could start. I think that would be a good idea to start uh, a thread in the forum about the, the issues we've talked about. Yes. To, um, to well, for there to be a follow up to all this, uh, and possibly we could have I don't know another another meeting with with other people uh, uh, regarding these matters because I, I, well, it's it's going to it's going to, to to last for a while. So let's well, we shall create a thread uh, to uh, welcome the questions and 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 address them. I would like to because uh, there are many things also I uh, noted and I thought but I forgot. Uh, yeah. now in the flow and uh, yeah i would be happy to continue our debate and uh, interaction and uh, yeah as a last word we we should act you know nothing will come uh, automatically exactly and uh, hope uh, this has been uh, helpful for uh, audience and yeah. participants as well journalists have been reporting about the world when the matter is changing the world <laughs> Yes, and not alone, together. Yes, yes. So, goodbye. Okay, bye.